After an incredible Christmas in the creek and a not so incredible town hall meeting, people have questions. Like, what flavor cookies did Juliana give you, Jeremy, at Christmas in the Creek? Well, it might have taken me a little bit of a while to figure it out, but they are molasses. Speaking of molasses, Gary Ashdown has an important question, and it's all based on the town hall meeting. He says, what would happen if everybody resigned because of the new regulations? He's talking about Form 6 in Florida. How would the council carry on? Would the state take over? As for the new requirements for the council officials to disclose over here in the UK, we would say they want to know the ins and outs of the duck's backside. What about the molasses side? Um, the polite version, says Gary. All right, Gary. Form 6 is what's putting everybody in a uh, an uprile, in a, in a scurry to go, do I really want to serve? Now you have to understand, a lot of these little municipalities, they have individuals that are receiving little to no money. So in Otter Creek, they're getting $100 a month to sit there in one meeting. Now there are individuals who are doing no extra work whatsoever, such as Don. All he does is he complains. When he could have all that information beforehand, he could do his homework as the residents expect him to do and be prepared, but he doesn't. He just shows up, he creates havoc and chaos, and then he gets his $100. Actually, he gets his $100 before tucks is in his shirt. And there are other individuals that are getting nothing, literally nothing in their municipalities. So, you have to understand for individuals to actually want to serve when they're getting little to nothing whatsoever and to have all of this personal uh, attack on their privacy all put out there. And I know there are some out there are going, well, what does it really matter, Jeremy? You pay your taxes. Listen, anything you owe or you own a thousand dollars or more must be documented. And it's out on the internet for the world, okay? Now, think of how many things that you own that are $1,000 or more. Think of how many things I've found that are $1,000 or more. There is no way I want everybody to know what's in my home, what's in my warehouse, what's in my, in my, in my, in my. I have enough people trying to steal from me on a daily basis. I mean, just look at Russ the Sus here in Otter Creek. What would happen to the town hall? If there's not enough people to actually serve, then it goes belly up and either the county or the state comes in. So in other words, I think the state is trying to flush out all of these smaller little towns and, and unincorporate these areas and allow the, the counties to actually care for it. A couple reasons why I think that. Number one, I think it cuts down on corruption. But here's the other thing to think about. When you put in these rules and these regulations and you have individuals that have amassed some wealth and they done it because they have business knowledge and they actually know how to run things and they know how to be a good steward of money and then you go, hey, we're going to put all your private information out on the internet. They're going to run away. And who's going to come in? with the cockroaches, the bottom feeders, and they're going to go, well, we don't care. We don't have anything. Let us get our hands on this money in the town of Otter Creek. You've seen that happen already. Russ the Sus, Don the Con, Mary Mary. You had another, you had another candidate try and get in on that open seat that has no business, none whatsoever, attempting to try and be on a seat whatsoever. Individual doesn't even own a home to live in, Right. So you have these major issues of if you push the good people out, you're going to bring in the bad people and things are going to get worse. So the state trying to push that corruption out may actually increase it. The best case scenario, the town of Otter Creek unincorporates. And that doesn't mean Otter Creek is not Otter Creek anymore. It just means we don't have a council. And it still means Christmas in the Creek goes on every single year. Most Excellent Mother says, thanks to Gail for serving on town council. Have a blessed and Merry Christmas. Gail was an addition, a very positive addition to town council, and we appreciate it. Right, Blondie? Blondie appreciates Gail because Gail and Blondie were guarding Santa's workshop and inviting all the kids in, and Gail did a phenomenal job. Can't wait to serve with her again next season. Addison wants to know, how come all the board members didn't show up for Christmas in the Creek? Well, the reality is this, Addison, not all of them care about the community. You see that in their, in their nominations, in their voting. You see that in the way they 
they address the town council as a whole or how they approach their position on the town council. They don't care about anybody else but themselves. Now, if Russ the Sus showed up at Christmas in the Creek, we would have welcomed him with open arms because it was all about the kids and the joy of serving the community. If Don the Con showed up, we would have welcomed him with open arms. Mary Mary showed up. We would have told her she could get five gifts for her grandkids if she has them. Although we would have had to do a little check afterwards because we know five to her is most likely like nine. Wanda Hargrove wants to know, isn't this new law, and she's talking about Form 6 in Florida, against the Fourth Amendment? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, nor a judge, even though I talk about legal things. There's a difference between knowing the law and actually being a professional in the law. For example, uh, you know, taking the bar exam, passing, having a license. I don't have those things. So in regards to your question, is it illegal? I don't think it's been challenged yet. And that doesn't mean that it won't be challenged. Maybe somebody in the legal profession will challenge it. But as of right now, the law stands. It's, it's in place. And as of December 30th, everybody must share all their financial information. Gordon Maycock has a question. What's the status on the Russ the Sus and Don the Con thought the state is investigating them? Well, the question is a very good question. And as you know, justice is slow. So one of the things that George and I had to do, we had to get down to Florida in a certain amount of time to meet with the state investigator. We could not make it down here in that amount of time because we had to be up in Ohio for different legal trials up there. We finally made it back down and the investigator is making it down here in just a number of days. So schedules are now coordinated again. Investigator will be in Otter Creek all day and uh, will be discussing with many different individuals. I'm not the only one. George is not the only one. And uh, what I can share with you is there's going to be a tremendous amount of information shared with this investigator from videos to paperwork to, to testimony. And it's going to go on and on and on. We do know he will be here all day all day, not only talking to us, but talking to others as well. And this will be a full-blown investigation. And also what we know is we're not allowed to film it, even though we asked and we tried. And we even said, can we release it later? No, it's not. It's all confident. The entire investigation is confidential. I can talk about there's the investigation, but the investigation and the information contained is confidential until five days after it's closed. Then it becomes public information. Susan Banks wants to know, do you guys think you had a little helping in this new law, Form 6? Because there's been a lot of publicity since your lawsuit. Well, here's what we know. We've encouraged you to call the state attorney. We've encouraged you to call the governor. And now we know there's a new law on the books. So do we know that that prompting and the publicity of Otter Creek has done something for the state? There's possibility now, again, this can go in a positive direction because corruption is trying to be swept out. But the, the, the negative direction is that nobody, like, like me, I'm not going to willingly tell you what I'm worth and where all my worth is stored. I'm not going to tell it to you. That's opening myself up to theft. That's opening myself up to identity theft, personal, physical theft. I'm not going to do it. Do I know how to manage money? I think I do it very, very well. I think God has blessed me to be a wise stewardship of what he has gifted me and for us to actually gift it back to others. But I am not going to run for council in Otter Creek. So if you go, Jeremy, but you'd be the perfect person to run for council in Otter Creek. Even your Christmas in the Creek had more details and more information that had to be managed and you needed leadership for than the entire town of Otter Creek. And I agree with you. Christmas in the Creek did have more information and more details to bring all together than the entire town of Otter Creek. And there were wonderful people who came together to make that happen. I'm still not running. And if I'm not running, do you think other quality people are going to run? Probably not. They don't want their personal information out there. So what are you going to get? You're going to get the... Oh, you're, it could get worse. White Fang Moonpaw says, hi, I've got one question. Could that council member that stepped down, that would have been Gail, could they have a vote on who could get voted in for the empty seat? All right, White Fang Moonpaw. I see what you're saying. You're saying 
This member steps down, and there were five people. Now there's only four people, and there's that empty seat, and it's it's vice mayor and mayor versus Don and Russ, right? It's two and two. Could that fifth person, Gail, who stepped down, come in and help vote in the next person? Unfortunately, once you step down, you lose all power that you had in any type of voting situation. So once you resign, you no longer have a say, you no longer have a vote, Gail is now just a member of the community, just like myself and George. Denver Broncos 07. No, 87. Oh, boy. That was rough years against the Cleveland Browns. I don't even want to replay that in my mind. Bernie versus Elway. Bernie, Bernie. You remember that, George? Oh, yeah. We got to go to the Super Bowl. Okay, George does not remember that, but I do. I have brain fog right okay, now. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. You're sick. We're all sick but we still have big smiles. So Don makes a motion and then opposes his own motion. What? <laughs> okay. Listen, Don only made the motion Shocking. so that the conversation could move forward so he could oppose it, okay? Uh, making a motion of saying, hey, I second the motion, all that does is it furthers the communication forward if we're going by Robert's rules. Robert's rules is motion, second, conversation or discussion, then a vote. I don't particularly like that. And again, it's not legal that they have to follow Robert's rules or parliamentary rule. What I like is conversation and discussion, then a motion, then a second, because this conversation and discussion clarifies what your motion is going to be. So I don't like the aspect that we're making a motion, then a second, then conversation, and then a, and then a vote. I like conversation. And if you're asking, Jeremy, have you ever done that before? Yes, when I had a board, and I've had a board as a nonprofit, uh, and I had I I was the executive director, and I had a president of the board and secretary and vice president, the whole deal. I always had conversation first, then a motion, then a second, then I'll vote. So if he's just making the amendment to get to the point to push it forward to conversation, so he can turn it down, that's what his ploy was. His his goal was to move it forward to shut it down, instead of what you would see in healthy boards or healthy councils. They want to communicate, figure it out. They want to, you want to refine what your amendment is, okay? So you, you can make a very, very clear amendment. Maybe a dollar amount, maybe a date. We're going to have on this date and this happens at this dollar amount. We're going to converse about it. And then we're going to clarify it. Then we're going to make a motion, a very, very clean and cut and crisp motion. And then a second, and then we're going to vote on it. But that never seems to happen. Nothing is clean, cut, clear, or concise, or even non-corrupt in these meetings, it seems. Sassy Puppy says, step down and lose that $100 a month. Are you crazy? <laughs> Russ the Sus and Don the Con ain't gonna step down and lose that $100 a month. They crinkle all up, put it in their pocket before they even do anything. Don walks out, leaves, then comes back. With nothing, I, I mean, okay, I get it, I get it. I understand what you're saying, sassy puppy. There are individuals that don't care about their personal information. And, and it may be because they haven't amassed wealth, or it may be because they just don't care about anything but wealth. So they want that $100 a month. Me personally, that $100 a month means nothing in the aspect of protecting all of my information online. I mean, there's plenty of people that constantly are online trying to figure out what George and I are worth. And I can share with you very, very openly and very, very transparently and very boldly, everything online is so wrong, completely and totally wrong. And it's so off, it's ridiculous. Like it is ridiculously off what our worth is. Now, could you imagine if we ran and all of a sudden you saw Jeremy Hales owns this, Garbage Pail Kids, worth da 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 And George owns this, her entire Elvis collection is worth da 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 And then Jeremy Hales and George have all of this gold, silver, and jewelry, and gems, and it's worth da 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 I mean, could you imagine all of a sudden that being out there? George and I laugh at what people try and guess at what we're worth right now. Nobody needs to know that private information. No one. No one. You're not privy to it. You're not privy to it because I watch Jeremy and George every day and they put themselves on on YouTube. Therefore, I should know everything that they have and every dollar that they make. Nope. Doesn't work that way. You're on YouTube right now too. Should we know everything about you?
Peter Grimes writes in and says, I'm just wondering something. Can the mayor not second a motion to move things forward? I never see her second a motion. Can someone answer this for me, please? Well, Peter, you're in luck because today we're answering your burning questions. So the mayor can vote. I do not believe the mayor can make the motion or second a motion. Now, I could be wrong. Some of this is going to be based off of information that Otter Creek has in their actual charter. Sometimes, in some places, a mayor can have a vote that breaks a tie, but in this situation, that is not the case. So you could see a motion being made by Vice Zim, not seconded by the mayor, or potentially maybe seconded by the mayor. It all depends on the aspect of what your rules are in your guidelines, which is your charter, okay? It's gonna be your charter, and it's gonna be what guidelines and rules are you following for your procedures in your actual council meetings, right? So you're not seeing it because she's not doing it. That doesn't necessarily mean she can't, or it means she knows that she can't. One or the other. At this point, I'm not even sure. Phyllis Gamio says, so the state man is telling the council to lie to the federal government. Is he crooked also? There's a lawyer there and she said nothing. All right, Phyllis, you and I have kindred spirits, no doubt whatsoever. Because when you heard this, it made you uncomfortable. When I heard it, it made me extremely uncomfortable. So let's back up a little bit. Number one, he's not a state man, okay? He works on the grants. So he's kind of the middleman. Let's say this is Otter Creek and this is the government, he's in the middle saying, hey government, I want to get this money for Otter Creek, but the money's got to flow through him. He gets a cut, right? So if he's going to get his cut, then he's going to try and get the money to flow so he can get his cut as well. To make it flow, he's going to say this community center is for medical purposes. I'm not okay with that. Phyllis, you're not okay with that. The lawyer said nothing. I guarantee you, you were there, I was there, we both saw, lawyer said nothing made me extremely uncomfortable that we are actually lying or manipulating to actually get a building built that um, can't, can't even be afforded by the people currently. Now, that doesn't mean thousands of people won't come to Otter Creek. We saw that already with Christmas in the Creek. But how are they pumping money into the system to help afford paying the daily expenses of that building? Well, if Otter Creek actually had businesses with thousands of people being flooded in here for Christmas in the Creek, all businesses would have made money. Everybody in Otter Creek could have made money during Christmas in the Creek. We did not make money. We gave money away. And so other individuals could have made money. Here's the thing. The original grant was for fiber optic for poor communities. I mean, you can say it any way you want to say it. You can say urban. You can say it was underdeveloped. You can. It's poor communities. Okay, Levy County is a poor community. And you go, Jeremy, why are you guys there? Well, easily, because we found what we needed in our business plan that gets us to all the major cities. We've gone over that before. And we love to help people. So why not be here? But now that fiber optic, there was another grant by the government and Central Electric, Central Florida Electric, grabbed that up and put all the infrastructure in. So now there's money that was for fiber optic and now they're going, okay, what do we do with this now? Well, we can put in sidewalks or we can put in a community center. Well, how do we get the community center in? Well, we say people are going to get their shots and they're going to get this. I mean, remember, it was COVID money, right? They're going to get vaccines. When they're not, they're not. I don't like that. I don't like that it's it's a manipulation. I don't like that it's a lie. There's been enough corruption and cover-up in Otter Creek as it is already. I don't think we need anything else like that. Um, I think there's other ways to do it right. Just say what it's really going to be used for. Cindy Chris says, Russ didn't even look at the flag. Such a disgrace. I noticed that as well. We're pledging allegiance to the flag. And Russ isn't even looking at the flag. And you're going, okay, Jeremy, if you noticed it, you weren't looking at the flag. Well, I was saying the Pledge of Allegiance and then decided to twist the camera around like this as I continued to say the Pledge of Allegiance looking at the flag because I wanted to know what everybody else was doing. Because when Russ was sworn in, everybody said he wouldn't even touch the Bible. I wanted to swing the camera around. He's not even looking at the flag. That... He is so proud that Don, at one point, he says, thank you for serving. And apparently Russell even might have served at one point. We have no confirmation of it, but Don did tell George that he did at one point. But again, we have no confirmation from Russell. 
and yet he won't even look up at the fa- the flag. Why is is he is he embarrassed? Is he uh, guilty? Is he disgraced? That at one point he actually fought for these freedoms and now he's undermining them. Blue Line of Corruption writes, if I say I don't qualify, can I pay for it for myself? Speaking of the fiber optic coming in. And install the fiber optics too for my home or my business? Well, yes. That answer is yes. So there was an early sign up for anybody who wanted fiber optic coming from Central Florida Electric. So George and I signed up two, not one, two huge gigs, okay? $99 a month, two gig. George and I only get one gig. That's the most that we can get up north. Two gig for $99 a month. That's upload and download. Now, for most people, they only care about download. They care about watching movies, streaming, da, da, da. Two gig is more than enough for an entire family to do that. George and I care about upload because we need the upload speed for YouTube and for live streaming. And so two gig for $99 a month. So George and I already signed up for the ranch house and they'll run all the fiber optic out for $99 a month. And we've already signed up here for the schoolhouse, $99 a month. And you know what? Deanna lives up front. She could actually sign up for herself as well if she wants to. So you can get all of this fiber optic. They had early sign up so they knew exactly how much was going to be on the map. The price increases if you didn't do the early sign up. But my goodness, have you ever heard of two gig up and down speed for $99 a month? Like we're going to have better internet in Florida than anywhere else in the world. Vintage Stuff Lover says, let me get this straight. The proposed community center is supposedly going to be used for COVID vaccination clinics and medical checkups, but that's just a lie to get the money, right? Is In what way will this community center benefit the town? All right. So we've kind of covered this already. The cover up to get the money, to get the building. Well, let's ask another question. Where's the building even going to be? So is it going to be in the center of the town so all townspeople can come to it and have a benefit from it? Will it be on the outskirts of the town so people have to run to it? I, we don't even know where this proposed thing is even going to be, let alone what it's going to, how big it's going to be, which again, we were told this last meeting, 150000 don't go a long way in a building. And it does not, especially in a commercialized building. It has to be hurricane-proofed as well. 850000 is going to be used up in infrastructure to get utilities there. Your building is going to be ridiculously small. So how's it going to benefit the people? I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's a town hall already. That is a building to benefit the people. How is it used? Pay water bills. Okay. So we use it to pay water bills. We use it for a monthly meeting that nobody shows up to. And, and while I wish more people would show up, I wish the good people, the, the, the beautiful people of Otter Creek would take their town back from this corrupt regime, okay? You know, at, at some point, you have to go, whether you like Jeremy, whether you like George, whether you like what the hails, you've seen what Russ the Sus has done. You've seen what Don the Con has done. You've seen what Mary Mary Mathiscary has done. And at some point, you got to go, I don't care if I like Jeremy or not. I don't care if I like George or not. I don't care if I like what the hails or not. I don't care if I like YouTube or not. What they've done is wrong. And we've got to take the town back. We've got to take our town back and start doing right. Remember? Hudson mentality, actually caring about people, doing things for people, loving on people. We need the Hudson mentality to saturate the town of Otter Creek. Will Community Center do that for us? No, but the right people will. Maria asked the question, when you second something, doesn't it mean you're in favor? So how do you vote against it then? So we kind of already touched on this, Maria. So for example, if um, if I really wanted to eat your cake that you brought to Christmas in the creek, I'd be like, I'll make a motion we eat the cake right now. And then George goes, I'll make a motion we eat the cake right now. You would think that George and I both want to eat the cake, right? Yeah, I mean, it was delicious cake. Maria brought some of the best cake ever. Not to mention some of the best food ever. And we put on, what, 5, 10, maybe 15 pounds, George? Somewhere mm-hmm. along those lines. Yeah. Because Cynthia brought food, Maria brought food, Kevin. Kevin brought food, Ryan brought food from Bubba Q's, And there were other people. There were many, many other people who brought food. All kinds of snacks. And, and the kitchen is still overflowing with food. 
you would think that they're all for it. But again, this was just a ploy for Don to wreak chaos and havoc in the meeting. As he calls me a hijacker as I'm trying to get people to see what's really happening in their town with their money. And yet, he can't even... <laughs> he. I just, I'm lost at words for Don the Con. He's just, he's just one huge enigma. Michelle Eastlake asked the question, why does Don oppose everything? Okay, well, let's dig into that a little bit. Uh, number one could be age, right? A certain age, you know, even George and I were going, man, we're getting older. We don't want to become that person that goes, get off my lawn. We want to invite people into activities and events like Christmas in the Creek. We don't want to tell people, Don! destroy my lawn, which our lawn got destroyed, right? We'll fix it. We'll fix it. And we want to invite people back in. So it could be age that he's just, he's just angry, could be angry and bitter. Uh, you know, so other things happen in people's lives, which then spur up other things. So at Don's core, he may be a very angry, very embittered individual. He may have an issue with females in charge. Now, you know, I got a lot of females telling me what to do, right? You got George, so I claim I'm in charge, and we all know she is in charge. Deanna, uh, there are those that claim that, I, for, George, is it true that, that I have a problem with all older women, like some people claim because of Mary Mary and Marilyn? And, mm -mm. No, no. It okay. just so happens to be that those two were older. It just so happens. That the underwear bandit nasty. wasn't old. Oh, underwear bandit wasn't old, and we never really met her. The girl um, that gave you a fake $100 bill, she wasn't old. Oh, she wasn't old either. They're just bad people is what it comes down to. There's no to. age limit to accountability. But we got Deanna, and um, I have her phone number for those who want it. You know, I mean, Maybe we'll do a little fundraiser with that. Uh, I'm not saying she's old. I'm just saying she's older than me. And Deanna cracks the whip on me. As a matter of fact, yesterday she was pretending to be our mom, making us take medicine all day, both George and I. And now guess who's sick? Deanna, mm -hmm. okay? Now you got Patience, who's younger, who cracks the whip on me and tells me what to do too. So, I mean, I'm sorry. And no doubt Pepper is going to be telling me what to do. <laughs> I have no doubt whatsoever. And I can guarantee you I'm going to be like, yes, Pepper. Anything you want, Pepper. Okay, Pepper, anything you want. Okay, so so you have all of that going on. You have at the core, Don just is in a, uh, an opposing person. So anything that isn't Don's way is not the right way. So I often use this analogy in leadership. In leadership, we are not to micromanage. We are to actually lead. And we're to cast vision and say, this is the direction we're going. So if we're at point A, let's say it's Otter Creek, and we're going to go to point B, let's say we're going to Orlando. We're going to Disney World. My job as a leader is to say, we're going to Disney World. But I want to give you the freedom to figure out how you're going to get there. So if we were to actually look at the map, you could go this way and get there. You could look this way and get there. You could go woo, 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 do loop-de-loops and get to Orlando. You could go over to Tampa and then run over to Orlando. You could go around in circles straight through. It doesn't matter how you get there. I'm not going to micromanage you. But Don wants to micromanage and say everything has to be Don's way. There is no other way. No, there's a million different ways to get to the same destination if we're going to Disney World. My goal as a leader is to say, let's go. And then your job is to figure out how to get there. But Don's going, no, my job is to say, let's go. And I'm going to tell you how to get there. And if you don't do it that way, I'm going to create complete and total chaos in your life. That's not a fun life to live. I would hate to be married to that man. Sado Flores has a very unusual question. As a matter of fact, I think he's going for the negative in this. Says, Jeremy, don't you declare all this in your, to your tax man? Why are you so worried? Is it the fact that it'll go through to them? I'm a little confused on your thinking here. So what they're referring to is Form 6. So let me take this back a little bit. Well, let me answer the first question. Number one, my CPA does all of my taxes and all income and all expenses are reported every year. And that is not the exact same thing as Form 6. As a matter of fact, Form 6 is very different. Different. It is not your taxes at all. Nothing. Form 6, you have to declare everything that you own that's over $1,000 and declare everything that you owe that's over $1,000. So that's everything in your life. Your taxes is your income and your expenses for the year, period. All right. So let me ask you this, Sodor. Why are prominent individuals who have served their community for 30 plus years now resigning. 
because it is a complete and total invasion of personal and private, private information. I don't need any of your information, or I could turn it on you. If you're not concerned about it, why don't you put all your information out there? Let the entire web take all of your information. Take everything. Or, okay, I got it. Right now you're going, well, I don't know anything. I don't own it and I don't owe it. All right, well, then you got no concern. You proved my point. The people that have amassed wealth and actually know how to run a business and know how to run a town and know how to run government are actually pulling out. And now you bring in the people who know nothing, who have proven in their life that they can't amass wealth and they can't handle money and they can't do things with that money. And now you're going to put them in a position of oversight of it. Not a very smart move. Jeremy Williams has a an insightful thought here. He says, I just couldn't help think it, but now, but if Don and Russ got into an actual fist fight, who would win? I, <laughs> I kind of think of it as I picture it, it'd be like them old Rock'em Sock'ems. You remember that, George? Mm-hmm. Don and Don and Russ would be like this. Couldn't even land, even get close. Be like, oh, trying to get close. Oh, 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 oh. I could just see Don <laughs> and Russ. <laughs> Neither of them ever landing a single punch. (laughs) Jane Hedge writes, oh my goodness, either you got way too much sleep, Jeremy, or you haven't had enough sleep in days. Well, Jane, I can share with you that it is the later. Getting too much sleep is not my issue. Not getting enough sleep is my issue. And when I filmed that, which you were responding to, I was up around the clock all night and have been for a few nights before that with everything that has been going on with Christmas in the Creek and other details of the business as well. So last night, I feel like I did okay. How are my eyes? Are they saggy, George? (laughs) We were all a little bit under the weather. When you bring thousands and thousands of people together and you have rain and you're standing out in the rain and you're screaming and you're yelling and everybody's hugging and touching and Merry Christmas and the joy that was there. Um, There's quite a few of us that that are a little bit under the weather and we still need some more sleep. Don't worry. I told Deanna she's taking all next week off. Now, George will just let me have the week off. Avocad Man says, all these things you do do, that you don't really need are costs that are too high for a small community to have to pay back. Make no mistake, you will have to pay it back. Do you really need a community center at that cost to the community? Does Otter Creek need a community center? Um, Well, we could say that Otter Creek didn't need Christmas in the Creek either, but it was a huge success. So a community center can do one of two things. It can draw people in, or it's going to create a huge expense that people can't pay for. My... (laughs) Listen, this is a biased opinion, right? This is just Jeremy. This is not, this isn't gospel of what's going to happen. And you have to filter that when you watch videos because there are times I'm wrong. Right, George? Mm-hmm. All right. A couple of times I'm wrong. But, but I don't believe that the town of Otter Creek in its current capacity and its current situation can handle the expenses of a community center. Especially if something happens where Russ the Sus gets back into office and becomes mayor again and they have lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. Listen, I have more paperwork right now because of my public records request that I could have 20 lawsuits going on against Russell and the town right now. I don't, but I could. And if he's ever put in that position again, I will. Christine Roman Noodle says, isn't our... Meaning Russ the Sus recording this meeting. Yeah, he's recording the meeting. And he's also recording the one where Don is complaining. Remember? He's complaining to Belinda. You didn't get this right in the in the minutes. And why isn't Russ coming to his offense going, I've got the recording. I recorded it. Russ is recording legally. He is illegally removing the recordings from town hall. Four months now, you asked Belinda, you saw Belinda ask him for the last previous four months of meetings that he hasn't turned in. Major ethics violation. And is anything going to happen? Well, investigators going to be here in just a number of days. Greg wants to know, Jeremy, why don't you run for the seat where somebody stepped down? All right, George and I have absolutely no, no. George, can you emphasize this with me? 
No. Zero. Zilch. No interest in running for public office at all. Even if the seat is temporary. Doesn't until matter. April, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Have no interest in running for public office. George and I do not go to our town hall meetings up north. We don't want to. We are involved and we will help our community. This is a very, very, and I don't use this term often, odd situation that we've had to get involved in the town of Otter Creek. They're stealing money from me. You've seen it. Pathological lying, manipulation, bigotry, racism. My list can go on and on and on why we're involved. I don't need to be involved in the council seat portion of it. And I don't, <laughs> I do not hold it against anybody in the town who doesn't want to be involved in it because it's a joke. That's all it is. It's perceived power because of water and it's a joke. Who in the world would want to go in there and sit next to Don the Con and rust the sus? Who? No one. Nobody in their right mind. What we're going to do is help protect the people on the other side of it. While many people may not be able to afford a retainer for a good lawyer, we'll help keep the town council accountable with legal action.